All right, we left off. We were working around these fingers. I think we're just about done there. I want to take my, I want to call this a number eight, number nine, small gouge. And I just want to get in here and clean up a little bit between the stick and the body. I still have not done much around there. And I just want to play around a little bit just to lower this level a bit. If you're going to leave this level in there, if you're going to leave that wood in there, you have a choice, either making it smooth or adding some kind of texture. You don't have to do it either way. I mean, you don't have to do it one way or the other, rather. You're going to have to do something with that area in there. So it's your choice whether you tool it and make it look like it's a background of some sort, or if you just leave it alone. That's entirely up to you. It's your carving. We'll get us a V-tool in here. Let's get a, yeah, that'll work. We'll get a V-tool in here to make some sharp cuts, sharp edges, tool around the legs and the body. Sorry, I'm getting a little bit off camera. We'll just, we're cleaning up that area and making a nice separation between the stick and the body. And I think we've just about got there. So when you do that, what you do then, you have to go back then and work on the areas that had left. Because if you can see here, this area right here around the sock still has some stuff left over. Got to clean that out. This area at the top of the sock is the same way. You've got an area right there, an area at the bottom of the shorts. You got to kind of clean those areas up. Not a big deal. We're just going to clean those up and make it look like the whole carving rounds into the rest of the carving. But when we cut, we leave some little stray marks that we have to clean up. And those are a matter of just um, when you're almost done with your carving, step back, take a good look at it. One of the big things when I was painting is, as artist instructors would tell you, before you're done, put your, car, put your painting on a stand and look at it from across the room. In fact, I heard about one wildlife wildlife and, and landscape photographer who did who did big pictures he would actually sit on the other side of the room of his studio which was you know 40 or 50 feet long and look at it through a set of binoculars and when you do that it gives you the long view so it gives you an opportunity to look at something and not see the whole thing but look at it in in pieces and so sometimes looking at it in pieces can make you feel really bad about what you've done but they can also point out some of the flaws that you look at too so feel feel free to do that with this carving <clears throat> you look at it real close and you're saying oh i got some cleanup there and you'll piddle here for 10 minutes and you got another cleanup over here and you piddle for another 10 minutes pretty soon you look up and an hour has gone and you really haven't done much to your carving but it's those little details that are the things that a buyer and a critic and a judge and other people will look at because they're they're going to see that my wife is really good at picking out where i missed a where she calls them holidays where i missed something while i'm painting or i forgot something or one eye is out of place in in, in relationship to the other and so you know you got to have those people in your life who are willing to tell you the truth and that truth is you missed something there you got to fix this you got to take care of that so sometimes if you don't catch them yourself somebody else will and you've got to open yourself up to that possibility Okay, we're just piddling around with some details down here. I've almost got the bottom finished, although I want to I want to take a my fishtail gouge and I'm just going to go around that sock. I want to soften that edge so that it looks like it's not a hard. I haven't seen very many hard edges on a sock. They're soft and comfortable and pliable and they're not very not very geometrically angular. If I can use that big a word. I better watch myself. I have a Appalachian background, I start using words. They might think I'm too highfalutin for anybody in the South. All my folks down there, they might think I'm getting too uppity. So I'll try not to use those fancy vernacular. Oh, there I did it again. Vernacular. All right, anyway, we're just doing some cleanup. I've softened that edge around the sock. I'll soften it up a little bit more when I get in to add some details like wrinkles and whatever but you could leave it like that and it would still look perfectly fine i told you i was going to put a thing in the back of his leg look like the leg is bent so i'm just going to add a, a bent cut in there looks like the calf goes up into the goes up into the thigh muscle 
Sorry, I don't know all the particular muscles for the leg. So we'll just call it good at that. We'll make corresponding cuts on the out on the front. So it looks like the knee is bent. So it looks like his leg is kind of, let me get a stiffer knife to get in there. It looks like his leg is bent. Don't leave any sharp edges on that because it is skin, it is leg, it is muscle and joint. So you just want to, you want to soften everything so it kind of looks like it's, it's going that way. And it's a little bit different when you're using just the leg instead of the pant leg. So if you've got it covered up, it looks a little bit different than when you're leaving it bare skin. We'll, we'll paint that as bare, as bare skin, not bare skin as in a skin of a bear, but bare skin is as skin that's bare important distinction there. I'm going to take a V2 and go around here and I'll show you how we put those lugs in there. I'm just going to take the V2 just a couple, two or three millimeters from the base. We'll just follow that around so that it looks like it's got some tread to the boot. And it's up to you whether you want to put a heel in there. If you were going to put a heel somewhere around right here you would make a deeper indentation for the heel, but I just want these to look like lugs. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that V-tool, a small one, and I'm just going to carve down and make one next to it and one next to it and one next to it. And then when you come in with a V-tool or with a, with a knife, you take out that little piece of chip in there. Starts to look like he has lugs on the boot. So it's a nice little detail that everybody's going to notice because they'll think you spent hours cutting that out with a tip of a knife and you know you really didn't you just you just took your v-tool and went in there like that and if you want to be careful pulling that chip out because sometimes you'll make marks on the base but you can easily pull them out with that without having to go back in there with your knife anyway it makes those little makes those little details that you want i'm not going to worry about stitching up here um, that's just a that's just a, an, an unnecessary level of detail. I don't need to add to this carving. It's not going to add a lot, and it's not going to take a lot off if I don't do it. So we'll just leave that. We'll finish that up a little bit later. Finish rounding the top of the stick up here, and so we're just going to again. This is based on the carving that I did in the magazine. It had a, a walking face up here. And uh, that's really hard to do on something that small. Your best bet is to do it with some dockyard tools. If you don't have dockyard tools, uh, look them up. Uh, I think there are still a few manufacturers that are making those miniature tools. But they're useful in terms of doing really tiny carvings. If you're like me and you're starting to get to the point where you need not only bifocals but trifocals, then that gets a little bit harder to use those little bitty tools. But, you know, they're very useful. And they, they serve a purpose in terms of carving little things. I have a, a friend of mine who just passed away a, a few years back. I miss him every day, David Sharp. Good old southern buddy of mine. We were from the same part of the country. He grew up in Stinking Creek. I grew up in La Follette, Tennessee, not too far away from each other. But anyway, he, would lo he loved to do miniature details. He did a lot of bark carving and on his bark carving where I, where I could logically fit one house on a bark carving, he'd have a whole town. And so he had a lot of that done in with using some of those dockyard tools and miniature tools that he used to, to make a whole town in a piece of piece of bark that I'd, I'd have a rough time getting an outhouse out of. David was able to, uh, to get a village out of there. So I miss that guy every day and <clears throat> Wish we'd have had more time to spend on, on, uh, on Earth together, but um, he was called away for his own thing. So <clears throat> we'll continue cleaning up our details and making sure we get everything the way we want. We can go back and add more details. You can add a pocket here. You can add a pocket here if you want to. Get ambitious all you want. Feel free to put a water bottle stuck in there, water bottle stuck in there, but I'm gonna leave that right there at that because I don't I don't really want to add a whole lot more details. We're trying to follow along with this guy, so we're gonna get close to him and have what we have with him in terms of 
what it's going to look like. So got some cleanup to do on some things. We'll do that uh, a little bit, a little bit on the, in the next video. So we're at about 10 minutes. I'll call this one good.